what really got you into this? Like, tell me your idea. What made you decide to do a glamping dome? Yeah, so one, we just wanted to build something cool. And I like these structures. So when we started down the road, we looked at shipping containers, tree houses, um, different glamping setups. And the main thing for us is we wanted an outdoor space. We wanted a place where people could slow down um, and also experience something unique, something that maybe you've never done before. I've never been in a dome before. When I saw these, I was like, they're, they just look cool. Yeah. And so I kind of went down that road. Um, also, you know, you think about what it costs to build something and what it costs to acquire land and, um, you know, all the costs that actually go into it. You think, well, what can we afford? We also didn't want to take on a lot of debt. So we started, you know, some financial things drove our decisions as well. And these are fairly, fairly affordable to do so. We went with it. Yeah, so tell me more. So when you decided to go into it, what's like the first step that you do? How do you even start? Well, for us, the site selection, the actual piece of property was, was huge because, um, you know, this is an area that people come to a lot. It's outside of Asheville. It's a destination. We wanted something that was close to, close to town, close to amenities, but also a place where you could really be in nature. And if you wanted to just stay on the property, you could. Mm -hmm. So we got water here there's a pond there's a, a creek so I, we had basically as we were looking at different pieces of land there was a list of things that we wanted and um, location what's the first rule of real estate right so <laughs> yeah um, the types of things and also the accessibility because um, a lot of places out here like this is this is a place you could drive your Honda Civic you know yeah <laughs> like so if you're from Charlotte or Atlanta or you know a lot of people who come to Asheville from some of the surrounding um, you know bigger cities it's a little unnerving and I, you know, I'm from Atlanta. I never thought I'd be out here building hippie domes and stuff, right? You know, it's not what I envisioned, but the first time you come to the mountains, if you're driving up the side of a gravel road, you know, and, and, and you're a little, like my wife is a little nervous to go up some of these pieces yeah. of land. So some of the pieces of land that we looked at, um, they're more affordable, but when you start thinking about the actual development cost and the site, uh, just, just getting things going, putting in a well, yeah. Um, putting in a driveway, the accessibility, and then also, um, you know, do you like? I found a piece of property that I thought was amazing and affordable and had an incredible view, but it was like 15 minutes down a gravel road, and Dang. that's just not, you know, when you start looking at the factors of what, you know, what are people looking for in a vacation, and what do we want as a, as a, you know, for our family and friends to enjoy? Yeah. This just sort of checked all the boxes for us, and so that's long story short how we came about this place. Well, there we go. I think this place is very beautiful. Now, I did give a tour of the one that is complete, but as you can see behind us over here, he's building another one, and he's in the middle of the process of that. So we'll be kind of talking about that. Tell me more about the one you're building right now, and maybe just from beginning kind of to end, just the overall idea of that and how to do that. Sure. Well, um, I wanted to put a treehouse there actually, but because um, there's there's a guy you've probably seen Nelson Treehouses, the the show. Yeah. They just look amazing. But when we started going down the road in terms of um, the cost and the time that it will take, um, we said, look, we've already done one dome. Let's just do another. There's efficiencies. There's things we've learned uh, on the first one. So we decided to go ahead with the second one. I like that site because. Um, you know, when you start getting into development and things, you have setbacks. The county requires certain things, um, and those drive some of the decisions that you make. If you're looking at building one of these on your property, you want to consult with your building code. Um, I'm a general contractor. I sat down with the zoning department. You know, we had a site development plan before we got going, and so that's something that's really important if you're going to do what we're doing, which is um, these are technically considered homes. They're prime, like we could live here. Mm -hmm. That's not what we built them for, obviously, but. Um, if you're going to do that, you have to start taking all these other factors into consideration. And so the, the coolest thing about this one is it kind of overlooks the So I think you're going to be sitting there with your cup of coffee, looking over and enjoying the, the view. Oh, yeah. When I first walked up there, I thought, well, this, this is where it belongs. You know, it just was obvious. And I think, you know, sometimes the, the, the site will drive some of those decisions. But so the first one we built is uh, 30 feet in diameter, which is 700 square feet. Um, the second one here is a little smaller. It's 24 feet in diameter and I got confused because I what is it? Pi R squared 3.1424. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, how do you calculate the area of a circle? No um, <laughs> jokes um, This one's smaller. It's about 450 square feet. So our design decisions and, and basically if you like anything inside It's because my wife is amazing and she designed everything she picked out the aesthetic. Um, I just said Okay, I'll do, you know, <laughs> tell me what to do. So, no, we, we, you know, uh, this one was driven by, 
what would you want if you were going to go out into the woods and have like a luxury like a nice hotel room in the woods that, yeah. that's kind of what we were thinking <laughs> so this has everything you need it's got a kitchenette it's got a bath you know turns out people like showers you know <laughs> like you know i love being outdoors i love exploring you know i'll swim in this little marginally it's anyway, pond. not yeah. it's a pond but like but also you know you want to sleep on a nice bed you want some you know air conditioning and, and so yeah. that's kind of the what we were thinking is is um not sacrificing some of the amenities that you're accustomed to but still getting an, an outdoor yeah you know nature kind of experience so i totally agree with all that i've totally experienced and this one behind me is really luxurious i even said in the last video that that it really is a home you have everything you need now this one that you're building where do you build i know you buy the framing from somewhere but you don't get like the deck and stuff with it so tell me more about that they work with you they consult with you throughout the process and it's the kind of company that you can pick up the phone and talk to a talk to a person they're excellent in that way and so you have to begin to work with them on the design the engineering like i said we work with the building department and so like we have a, a foundation inspection we have mechanical there's plumbing there's electrical so all of those different things um, when you initially start they'll give you a set of blueprints and they have an they have an architectural firm that they work with and they have structural engineers that will help you design the thing. <clears throat> so what, what we did is is we looked at the space and we said, I want it to kind of overhang a little bit. Like this one here, you'll notice it, 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 it overhangs the little drop off there. So there's some engineering that goes in, there's some structural you know, things that need to be certified and they work with you on that. They have a, um, they're licensed in all 50 states. So any place you want to build, they will give you the design, the they actually give you more than you need. They give you like a 50 page document on snow loads, um, wind load, like this structure falls outside the, the traditional building code, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to um, provide certain things to your local building department for them to, you know, to satisfy certain requirements. And yeah. so they work with you on all that, they give you that. So it's, yeah. it's a whole process of working with them, developing the thing that's particular to your site. And, yeah, and so they're great about that. Not everyone does. We did what's called a pier and beam foundation, which is just like a deck. But these are sitting on concrete with rebar. Uh, it's got they go 30, 30 inches in the ground. Not everybody needs to do that. Some people, um, you certainly don't need to do that if you're just going to put it on your property and, you know, put a just put it on the ground. Put it on the ground. Well, you you'll put it on these little. They're called deck concrete. You can buy them at Lowe's or Home Depot. Okay. It's just a little cinder block, um, and you probably are familiar with these, but you, you just set it right on the concrete, right on the ground. Okay. But for us, this needed to go beneath the uh, the frost line, which is 18 inches. So this is the thing I'm talking about without getting too technical. Like, <laughs> you know, every part of the country is a little different and has certain requirements for what you need to yeah. build, you know. But if you just want to put it out in your backyard, you can just set it on these yeah. and enjoy it. And, and um, But if you want air conditioning and plumbing and and the that whole shebang. Kind of, so, whole, if you want the whole shebang, yeah. Was there any coating, anything that was different than just a normal home that you had to really go around? Sure. Uh, you may have noticed, but like when you vent um, plumbing or any kind of any kind of ventilation, it has to go through the roof, right? And so, True. I don't know if you saw or you saw on the back end, yeah. but um, it actually goes goes through one of the holes. You know these windows are designed you work with them on the design of where the window placement is yeah. how it's oriented where the door goes um, and so these are some of the things that you want to consider um, also i would recommend in terms of like passive solar um, the orientation of the <clears throat> of the window is really important because um, you're going to have to think about how the sun is going to affect the heating and cooling and and so that's True. another thing to really to think about um, right now we're using this as kind of a three season uh, structure but this year um, we're going to put in the insulation package which is another it's it's an additional cost from Pacific Domes but what it does is gives you another layer of R value of uh, insulation so that when you heat it like we have a mini split we have a, a heating units and the problem with these structures you know if it's 18 degrees outside or 20 degrees outside which, cold. which gets cold um, you can generate heat, but it's hard to keep it keep it from insulated. Just, yeah. <clears throat> so the uh, the winter package that they provide will, will okay. help with that. They also have a paint you can put on the outside. It's like okay. a thermo shield paint, what they call. 
and that gives you some some additional um, you know energy savings. Definitely, if you're interested in building one of these, take note for everything right here, and definitely look into all of this. So.